Amen. Uh, here in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, we find one of the greatest promises of Scripture uh, that I think we could ever find. And while it is one of the greatest promises of Scripture, it seems like it's one of those promises that I don't uh, talk about very often or even think about very much. And yet it is uh, probably for the, because of this very promise and God's commitment to this very promise uh, that I am still saved today. Uh, that is the promise that not that I will never leave God, but that God will never leave me. Amen. He says, I will never leave thee. When he uses that kind of language, it's very uh, pointed. It's very uh, directed. It's very a matter of fact. There's not really much room for interpretation. There's not really much room for, for uh, cause to have a theological discussion. He just simply says in a very absolute language, uh, uh, the president of this last, last week said there are no absolute uh, rights. There are no absolute amendments. But, but yes, there are. But nevertheless, uh, uh, this is an absolute language. This is an absolute promise from God. Uh, amen. He says, I will never leave thee. Amen. That's absolute, isn't it? I mean, there's no wiggle room. You can't. You can't have passed something else that denies it. You can't come up with something different that takes its place. You can't say, well, maybe God didn't really mean it that way. Uh, yes, I, ladies and gentlemen, it is absolute. Just like the Second Amendment, by the way. It is absolute, amen, that, that uh, God will never leave us. Praise God. Amen. He said, I will never leave thee, and nor will I ever, God says, nor forsake uh, thee. I looked up the word, uh, the definition of the word forsake. And because God has promised that he would never do that to us. Now that's not to say that I will not forsake God. That's not to say that I will not walk away from God. That's not to say that I might not even for a season in my life leave God. That's not to say that I might uh, not for a season in my life forsake his commandments and his testimonies and uh, his truth. But that is to say that in all of it, God will never forsake me.
being praised to God. I give him God praise for that. And so this morning, I wanted to brag on God for a little while because the reality is that once you get a little bit of seniority under your belt, and once you've been around for a little while, and once you've been preaching like me for 15 years, and you've come through a few things, and you've gone through a few trials, and you've met a few people along the way, and people said, I'll never leave you, but they left you anyway. And people said, I'm never going anywhere, but they went somewhere anyway. And people said, you're the best thing I ever heard preach in my life, but it didn't last very long anyway. Come on. You know what? Once you've been around a little while, and you've seen you, and you got a little seniority under your belt, two things happen. One, you realize that people can never live up to this promise. People can never be God. People can never live up to such high uh, promises. I will never, never leave you. Only God can do that. But secondly, you also realize that along the way, a lot of people will leave you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's right. Come on. A lot of people will leave you. Now, that does not necessarily make them bad people. No. Right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Say, so well, they left me. Well, uh, maybe God, it was God's uh, indication for them to move on. Who knows? It doesn't necessarily make anybody a bad person. But what, what we are doing is saying that God is a really good God and he will never leave. And you know what the interesting thing is? I've given him about a thousand reasons to leave. And other people, if I'd have given them the same reasons, they'd have left the first time. But God didn't leave the hundredth. Because God is just that good that he doesn't leave his people. Amen. 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 So one thing I've discovered about people is people will often leave. Yes, sir. You say, Brother Jason, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Uh, yeah, well, all you got to do is think, think about this when it comes to the love of people. I've discovered this, and I love you folks, and I know you love me. But the reality is, and so I'm not, even, I'm not talking about you, and I'm not talking about anybody, but I'm just talking about human nature in general. Human nature in general says this, as long as you're doing what I want you to do, I'll love you and support you, and I'll clap you on, and I'll shout you on. But human nature also says this, the moment you stop doing everything I want you to do, the way I want you to do it, the moment I want you to do it, I'm going to go find me somebody else who would do it exactly the way I want, because the person I really love is me and not you. Come on, it's just human nature, and it resides in every one of us, but God is not that way. God is not that way. Hallelujah. If God was that way, he that left me on the first day, he saved me. That's right. Come on. Because there's probably many times where I stopped doing what God wanted me to do in the way he wanted me to do it, how he wanted me to do it. Yeah. Amen. And God doesn't just let well, I'm going to go find me somebody else. God is patient and God is kind and God is loving and God is merciful and God is gracious and God knows my frame that it is but dust and that I may make a mistakes, but my heart still loves him. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? God knows. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 10. I said I wasn't going to preach long this morning. I'm going to try to uphold my pride, my, my thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen. 2, 2 Timothy 4 and 10. The Bible reads in 2 Timothy 4 and 10, Paul, yeah. the apostle Paul writing, he says, uh, in verse number 10, he says, uh, for Demas, Demas, that's one of his friends, that's one of his preaching buddies. Uh, that's one of the people he, he, he was involved in ministry with. That's one of the people he thought would always be by his side. That's one of the people that probably sang in his choir and preached behind his pulpit and taught his Sunday school class and played the instruments and took up the offering and did all the other stuff that Paul would ever need in ministry. That's one of the people he depended on. But Kevin, you can't always rest on people that you're dependent on. You can't always rest. Demas, because sometimes his demons is leave. You know who you gotta rest on? You gotta let it rest on God who will never leave, never forsake, never walk away. Oh glory, he picked me up when I was a baby, and he's still with me now. And I've given him a lot of reasons to leave, but he didn't take me up on any one of them. Hallelujah! God is good. Amen. Come on, people. Woo. Hallelujah. People often leave. Yeah. They do. Yeah, that's right. People by nature are selfish. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. People by nature are selfish. 
And so as long as you as a person are providing them with what they want, they'll continue to be your friend. Yeah. And they'll continue to be your buddy. Right. And they'll continue to love you. Yeah. And they'll continue to support you. Right. But the moment you stop providing them with what they want, they'll go out and find them somebody else who would give them what they want. Yeah. You don't believe me? Look at all the men who had midlife crises when they hit the age of 45 and ran off for some 20-year-old. Come on. That's debauchery. That's fornication. That's lasciviousness. But it is also human nature. As soon as somebody doesn't give us what we want, we go find us somebody else who does. You know what? I've seen that same thing bleed over into church life. Man, you can think they're happy with their church. As soon as somebody doesn't do something that they want, it's come on. And all of a sudden, well, maybe I need to go find me another church. Well, maybe you do then. Because of your love, it's that fickle and that frail. Yeah, come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. You know what church would be like if every time the pastor looked at some member who didn't do exactly what they wanted and they said, well, maybe I need to go to church and find me a church that will. You know what would happen? There'd be no pastors at any churches anywhere. I decided to be, to try to be a better pastor than that. And I tell you what, if I'm ever not pastoring and I'm just a member, I'm going to try to be a better member than that. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 Come on. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. So, Brother Jason, who are you talking about? Who are you talking to? No one. Literally, I'm talking about no one. No one in this building. No one not in this building. I'm talking about human beings in general. I'm talking about the nature of humanity. There is something in me that is selfish. There is something in me that looks out for me. There's something in me that wants my way. There's something in me that says, if you don't do it my way, I'm going to find somebody who yeah. will. Yeah. So what do they do? They leave. Right. What do they do? They leave. They leave, they leave where? They leave churches sometimes, yes. Yeah. But that's not even what I'm talking about, really. They leave me. They leave you. But God is not that way. Hallelujah. I'm glad it's not that way. God, God, God doesn't walk into my life saying, what can I do? What can Jason do for me? God walks into my life and says, Look what I've already done for Jason. Oh, God is good like that. Yes, I will. All the time. Come on. So let's look at verse number 10. Is it yes? Amen. The Apostle Paul writing. And then the demons, you can look it up in the New Testament. He's mentioned two other times. Both times. Both times he's mentioned in a positive light where he's working alongside of the Apostle Paul. But in this verse, yeah. he says, Demas hath forsaken me. Here's why. It's not because I did anything bad by him. Look up at the, look up at the verse. It's not because I did anything bad by him. It's not that I uh, hurt his feelings. It's not that I stole his lawnmower. My wife says I like to use that. I don't know where I got that from. I like talking about stealing lawnmowers. <laughs> Nobody's ever stolen my lawnmower, by the way. <laughs> Amen. Having loved, then why did Demas leave Paul? Because he found a new love. What was his love? He said, having loved yeah. this present world, Demas fell in love with something besides Paul, something besides church, something besides ministry, something besides the gospel. Yeah. And when he fell in love with the world. It didn't, it didn't take Demas but two seconds to walk away from the Apostle Paul. And now this guy he thought was his friend. Now he can't find him with the FBI. Hey, where's Demas at anyway? Listen, if you depend on Demas all your life and if you think Demas is always going to be there for you, you are sorely mistaken. But God will always be there. Yes, God will always be there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Demas, he says, has forsaken me. So, first of all, I realize that oftentimes people leave. And sometimes, and I'm not talking about leaving a church. That's actually the least of my concern, at least of my point. That's right. I'm talking about leave us, leave us as people, leave us as friends, leave us as, as brothers and yeah. sisters. And come on. Leave us as, yeah, come on, and as family in Christ. And yeah. Why? People leave. Yes, 
not only family in Christ, but family in general. Right. People leave. Yeah. Dads walk away. Uh -huh. yeah. People leave. Yeah. Come on. Moms walk away. Yeah. People leave. Yes. And sometimes it doesn't even take that much. That's right. right. Sometimes it doesn't take that much. All it really takes is the selfishness that Brother Garland used to sing about that is bound in the heart of every person. The selfishness of a man. All it really takes sometimes is that selfishness reeling up and rearing up. And then it doesn't take much for me to say bye-bye, sweetie. Bye-bye, I'm leaving. But God never says bye-bye. You know why you're still saved? Because God never said bye-bye. for 15 years and why are you still saved after all this time and I, uh, by the way it must be because you make so much money off of preaching I don't make a dime off of preaching oh hallelujah my rewards in heaven oh, yeah. 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 why are you still preaching then brother Jason because he never left me Right. That's because right. he never left me. Right. Why are you still here? Because he never left me. Yeah. Why, why are you still kneeling at altars? Because he never left me. But did, did you ever leave him? Yeah, I did. But he never left me. He just kept drawing at me. He yeah. just kept being by my side. And he just kept calling out to me. And every time I thought he would leave because that's the way people treated me. He never left me. Right. Oh. He never left me. Yeah. Now I want to say this too. Come on, preach it. Because I don't want you to get the impression that I am saying that the people who have left are wrong. Maybe sometimes they are. Maybe sometimes they aren't. That's right. But the truth is, some of the time I deserve to be left. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. <clears throat> You don't think you've ever deserved to be left? Yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. You don't think maybe, maybe you've ever done too much, too often, too hard, and for too long, and you kept saying, I'm sorry, but they, they, they forgave, and you kept saying, I'm sorry, and they forgave, and you kept saying, it'll be different next time, and they forgave, and you kept doing all this stuff, and they forgave, and then all of a sudden, oh, you know what, there was just one time too many, and they quit forgiving. Have you, 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 you never been there? Maybe, maybe, maybe you've never been, maybe you've never been there before, but I tell you, I've been there before. And I'm not even talking about relationships with others necessarily. I'm talking about my relationship with God. There's been many times I said, God, I'm sorry. And he said, okay, I forgive you. God, I'm sorry. It's Tuesday. God, I'm sorry. Okay, I forgive you. I'll never do that again. Hey, God, it's Wednesday. I'm sorry. I'll never do that again. Thursday, I'm sorry. I'll never do that again. God, I don't know what's wrong with me. Hey, God, if you were like anybody else, you'd leave me. But he says, I'm not like anybody else. And I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I'll be with you even until the end of the world. Amen. Man, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes I deserve to be left. If you will, I told you I wasn't going to preach long, didn't I? Hallelujah. This may be time that you deserve to leave. I deserve to be left. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse number 7. I, I, I appreciate people... Christians who are so sanctified that they have everything together. I appreciate Christians who are so holy that they never, ever do anything unholy. I appreciate people who never make a mistake and who never sin and who never cease to sin, never stop seeking God and who always wake up in the morning and pray and who always go to bed at night and pray and who always read 10 chapters of the Bible a day and who tend to every church and every revival and every meeting and every prayer meeting and every, every Bible study and every women's group and men's group. And I appreciate the sanctified holy folk. I do. But I'm not always them people. That's right. So Brother Jason, are you sure? Yeah, I am. And I'm also sure that they're not always those people either. That's just what they want me to believe. Amen. Hello, Tokyo. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 16, verse number 7. The Bible says, but go your way. There's an angel at the, at the resurrection morning. And the angel in verse number 7 was talking uh, to a group of folks and they, he said the angel said to them in verse number 7 but go your way tell his disciples referring to the disciples of Jesus and then watch what he says and uh, Peter I like that and Peter well Peter was one of the disciples
disciples. So Mr. Angel, why did they need, need to make a specific mention of Peter? Because Peter had specifically messed up. Right. Peter, Peter, I mean, they'd all kind of walked away and all scattered when the, when, the, when the master was smitten. But the reality is Peter messed up in a great way. He denied even knowing Jesus. He cussed and he, he, he uh, 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 sort of uh, just completely uh, cast off his Christianity. And guess what I'm telling you? Though he had cast off his Christianity in many ways, look at this. Jesus did not cast him off. saved always saved people no I'm not but I don't care what you call me really to be honest with you I know this I'm still saved because he didn't give up on me that's what I know I don't know thank you Lord I'm not still saved because I never cussed because I have I'm still saved because when I did cuss he said go tell my disciples my disciples and Jason and he called me by name again and he made me realize I still had a home and he was still dad and he was still my father and still had a place to go. Thank you, Lord. When you when you've sinned and you messed up and you start to feel like maybe he doesn't want you anymore. And you start to feel like maybe he's gonna be like everybody else in your life and he's gonna walk away because we're so used to dealing with people and that's what people do. But no, not God. God says, go tell my disciples and Peter. Peter got a specific mention, not because Peter was specifically wonderful, but because Peter was specifically sinful at this time. And Jesus wanted him to know that he still loved him and wanted to care for him and wanted him to be in the family of God and was not casting him off for leaving. Him. That's good. Oh, hallelujah. He never left me. I got saved when I was eight years old. I got I got really saved too when I was eight. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. I mean, like God came down and just saved me. What a wonderful time it was. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know how much an eight-year-old can really even pursue God. But I got saved. God pursued me. Yeah, hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. I got saved. But like all eight-year-olds, I probably was concerned about eight-year-old things. And so I just played as a kid and messed around as a kid and right. played Nintendo and outside and did all the things that kids do. And man, I kind of ignored God from eight till about 15. When God came down in the middle of a church service one day at the age of 15. Yeah, totally. I was laying on an altar. God came down again and touched me again. And I, in that moment, I realized that I was eight when he saved me. And now I am here seven years later at 15. And all that time, I really wasn't pursuing him much. I mean, how much can an eight-year-old really pursue God? I wasn't pursuing him much, but he was pursuing me. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And he never left me. And I don't, I don't know why, I don't know how, because most people would have left, except for the fact that he's not like most people. He's holy and completely different than most people. There's not a selfish bone in his body, but he calls out to us and eight, and he stays with us through 15. And then I was 15 years old, and I completely went crazy until I was at the age of 21 years old, and God never left me during that time either. I don't know how, I don't know why, but he kept calling and he kept making me feel conviction of my sin and conviction from my lost state. I just don't know. But listen, if you ever, if you got married and entered into a marriage and you, and you got married and, and you got married on the, the, the day you got married uh, and then you pretty much ignored your spouse till you were 15, for the next seven years, your spouse would have already found somebody new. But God doesn't find somebody new. God doesn't trade you in. God doesn't look for a younger model. God doesn't look for a better model. God is interested in you and God loves you. You, and God never has forsaken you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm, glad. Amen. I'm glad God has never forsaken me. Hallelujah. I'm still saved today Thanks. because he has never left oh, thank you, Jesus. me. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn to one more verse and then I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. While you're turning to, to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. 
I'm going to read this verse. You remember this. Peter is probably our greatest example in the New Testament, I think, of just standard humanity. A person that loves God and walks with God and knows God and God knows him. But man, he's awfully human and he makes a lot of goofy decisions sometimes. And there's a, he gave God a thousand reasons to leave him, but God never left him. Amen. That's right. You remember when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, and uh, Jesus, uh, was, and Peter spoke up, and he uh, and he said, "Do you want me to build a tabernacle for Moses and for uh, Elijah?" I think was there as well. And, and pretty much, God the Father spoke out from heaven and said, uh, "This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Don't worry about Elijah and Moses. Worry about Jesus." I mean, Peter was always making these mistakes and always putting his foot in his mouth, and, and, and even to some degree, always, always messing up. Man, I find myself looking more like Peter than I do like Paul. I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. It seems like if you look at Paul's life, you just don't hardly see any mistakes or any sins or anything. I mean, it just, it just, it, it, I, I, you just don't see it. But even with Peter, even after God said, touch, touch Peter, fill him with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost and cause him to preach the gospel. And guess what Peter did? Paul had to go uh, stand him to the face one day and rebuke him because of his hypocrisy in the book of Galatians. I mean, I just said, that's just Peter. And now what Peter writes and he says, 1 Peter 1, verse number 5. Are you there? Yeah. He says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. Hey, Peter, how were you kept? Well, Peter said, I was kept because I was so holy and so righteous and so perfect and so Pentecostal and so holy and holiness. I, I was kept because I walked 100 pure all the time. I was kept because I prayed my tithes and I went to church. No, Peter can't say that. Peter says who are kept how? By the power of God. I'm telling you, that's the only reason I'm still here. That's the only reason Jesus and I are still walking together. It's because he has placed his hand upon my life and he has kept me. And I can say boldly with Peter that I am kept by the power of God. Some days he should cast me aside, but right. he has elected to keep me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. Yeah, he keeps me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise, praise God. God. He's kept.